Hello, my dear student. This is Samah Abdul Latif, lecturer in the British University in Egypt. It's my pleasure to join you in our first lecture in the Introduction to Communication course. I believe maybe some of you know me in um, in advance. Uh, maybe your representatives uh, know me due to my position as a program director. But it's my first time to join you as a module leader in one of your courses. Today, our course is Introduction to, uh, introduction to Communication System. The course is delivered for year three computer after prep uh, with the code 20 ELEC 09I. So now please join me to share my slides for the first lecture or actually the zero lecture. It's a module outlines lecture where we are going together through the main content, the syllabus of the course. We will try to de demonstrate together how we will run the course with a blended learning format. I mean, part of the course, mainly the tutorials and the lectures will be delivered online. However, the project follow-up meetings will be on campus. So let's start together the journey. Hope you enjoyed. So please join me. Okay, so I believe now that you can see my uh, slides, my title slides for the first, or actually the zero lecture. It's Introduction to Communication Course 20 Elec 09i, first semester, year three, after prep for computer engineering students. Let me first start to uh, operate my laser pointer and go with you together through the slides. Okay, so actually, while I was planning to prepare for this course, the first question that comes to my uh, mind is this question. Why should or why computer engineering students should need communication systems? I used to uh, have these course as a communication system, maybe in more advanced manner while I was a student, in my undergraduate uh, student. And actually, I used to teach this course as a TA, maybe nine, 10 years ago, something like that. But all these stuff were implemented under the umbrella of the electrical and communication program. Now, my audience is a computer engineering students. So it makes sense to say or to ask myself, why should teach computer engineering students communication systems? So let's first try together to find a solution or to find an answer for this question. And in order to find an answer, let's first start with to define terms. Here we have two main keywords, computer engineering students and communication system. So let's go deeply to the definition of these terms. Who are the computer engineering students and what is the communication system? So, Computer engineering students, oh, these computer engineering students are genius students who are dealing with different types of programming languages. They are dealing with embedded systems. They are dealing with uh, computer architectures and something like that. So these are my knowledge uh, or my background regarding the communication, uh, regarding the, sorry, the uh, computer engineering students. Now uh, I'm uh, thinking about more uh, let me say official definition. So I start to search over the internet. I start to Google the, what is the computer engineering system. So I, 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 I actually, I, I, I reach uh, this definition. This is uh, actually, by the way, this is a formal definition uh, based on one of the biggest universities in the world. So they say that computer engineering students, our computer engineering is a blend of electrical engineering and computer science, uh, uh, which is, is focused on the design, development, and the use of computers to, contr to control devices, equipment, and process. So they are people who have a mixed background between electrical engineering and between computer science. The role is to con control some applications, some equipment, some devices, something like that. So let me now catch the word control devices, equipment, and processes. Here, one of these controllable 
systems may be a communication system. So computer engineering students will focus on the application of the communication system so that they will be the one who will implement the background, the backstage system capable of controlling the communication system. So it's some sort of application for you at the computer engineering. This is basically my understanding. So this is the definition for a computer engineer, computer engineering students. What about the communication system? What is communication system? So actually there is tons of definitions for communication system, but let's start with the most simple one. Communication systems are those systems used to transfer some sort of data. In communication theory, they call it information. You are transferring information. Here we have to have a, a, a fixed, restricted definition for information. So information is those data which are known by the source, but they are not known or they are unknown with the receiver. If the receiver knows the information, then it's no longer information. So it's some data sent by the source. The source only who knows this data, the receiver expecting to receive something, but he, 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 he doesn't know what it exactly is. So he is receiving something, he will see later what is this. And now the communication system is a system key, uh, responsible for transferring the source data into the receiver side. So basically communication system can be divided into three stages. We have the source or in other words, the transmitter, the medium, or the channel and the receiver or the detector. So these are the main three elements for a communication system. Now let's go deeply in more scientific or in more, a more modeled way to model the communication system. This is a basic block diagram. You will find this block diagram everywhere in any communication system reference. It's a uh, input transducer this input might be for example now this recorded voice from um, my side through the microphones the microphones is transducers it can be an image it can be in video which the data i'm now recording over zoom so it's some type of physical phenomena that is transferred into electrical and electrical signal through a certain transducer this is the initial stage of the sender then we have the transmitter. The transmitter is a device or the stage which is responsible for preparing this electronic signal to be in the form capable or suitable to be transmitted over the channel. And then the receiver, which receives the signal from the channel and return it back to the output transducer, which is, for example, maybe the speakers, now you are hearing my voice through the speaker. So the speakers are the transducers on your receiver side. So again, we have the three main transmitter, channel, and receivers block, somehow in a detailed manner, but with the same concepts, with the same three stages. So from this program, we can say that we are now in this course more interested in two specific blocks the transmitter and the receiver the transmitter is a block which should inputted by, by the electrical signal coming from the input transducer which is again the, for example it might be the electrical signal converted due to my voice and then the transducer should shuffle this data some way or another and re prepare it to be suitable for transmission and the word suitable for transmission is actually very important in our course then another guy on the other side will receive this data through after passing the channel and then shuffle it around again to make it suitable for the end transducer or the output transducer which is for example the speaker to return it back to the original uh, form which is vibrations for example when we are talking about sound so this is generally the communication system again 
we did not solve the, the, the main question. What is the relation between computer engineering and communication system? Now, we define the commu communication, uh, sorry, we define the computer engineering student or the computer engineering in general. We talk somehow about the communication systems, but where did they overlap it? So, as I mentioned in this course, we are interested in these two main plug diagrams or two main stages, the transmitter and the receiver. Now, we will try to mix somehow these two stages in what's called a transceiver. All our communication systems currently are transceivers because simply, if I'm trying to search for my mobile phone, yeah, this is my mobile phone. My mobile phone is a transceiver. It transmits my voice and it receives voice from the other side, from the cooler, and I can hear it. So it's, it's, it's bi-directional. It works as a transmitter and then the receiver at the same time. So I don't know if you hear the word transceiver before or not, but this is very important word or a very important term for the communication systems. So transceivers is simply a mix between a transmitter and receiver. One of the most famous uh, on-shelf transceivers is this one. This is actually, I use it maybe in three or four times in my recent publication where I'm dealing with some wireless underwater systems. This is a 433 or 433 megahertz transceiver. You can find it in the commercial stacks in Egypt where you can buy electronics components. So this transceiver is simply a simple type of embedded systems. It contains a microchip inside. It can be an Arduino chip can be a Raspberry Pi, it can be an FGA, it can be ARM processor. So inside this transceiver, you will find an embedded system. And I believe that you are experts in this panel. So this is overlapping. Whenever you are going to build a communication transceiver, you need to call a guy who is an expert in embedded systems and told him, please, I need to do one, two, three, four, five, six. Please do it for me and burn it over such a, a board or such a, mic, a microprocessor chip. So in order to do this stage, you have to have what we can call a macroscopic view. You have to know, you have to understand what is the overall image. And actually, this is the target of this course. We are targeting to have a macroscopic, a wide angle view over the communication systems so that when you come to work in a certain stage, which may be the transmitter, the receiver, or the transceiver, you can understand why you are doing these tasks and to what you will end up as a final product. This is a very brief introduction. I hope I can reach your satisfaction regarding the understanding of why you are learning communication systems. And let's now turn to something more administrative to see what is the role or what is the track of this course with respect to your curriculum. So maybe one semester ago, you have already uh, enrolled in the signals and systems course. I, be, I believe it was in your second year. Then, now you are in the introduction to communication system course, a second course in the communication track. Then, one semester from now, second semester inshallah, you will be a part of the digital signal processing or what's called the DSP course. And finally, you will have an optional course under the, under the name of digital image processing. By the way, we will consider something about digital image processing in our first lecture. So this is somehow a track with, let me say, courses with a communication flavor. Of course, it's a courses with a communication flavor. However, you will find yourself as a computer engineering everywhere in these courses. So whenever you will go deeply inside these systems, you will find that you are the guy who will going to implement such systems. Okay, so let's go to our course scope. From my perspective, I can consider our course into three thirds. We have an extension for the signal system course. 
I call it extension because it's still related to the signal and system theory, where we are going to recall or flashback the, the, the part related to the Fourier transform. I believe you already studied Fourier series, maybe you already studied also Fourier transform. So we will recall the Fourier transform, or maybe if you don't um, make it before, then we, we will make it for the first time. And then also we will have a very important investigation related to the frequency spectrum analysis or the fre sorry or the frequency domain analysis this is important uh, to some extent then we will transfer to the standard conventional analog communication systems the main three analog communication systems the amplitude modulation the frequency modulation and the phase modulation finally as a third and final stage in our course we are going to deal with digitalization which means how to digitalize, how to transfer your analog message into a digital message. The process of digitalization, how it, how it is implemented and what is the most famous digital modulation techniques. This is the overall perspectives or scopes of our module. As a teaching team, it's myself, I already introduced myself, Sam Abdul Latif, lecturer and the program director for electrical engineering department. And Actually, it's a great honor for me to be a part with my dear colleague, Engineer Ahmed Imam, who is the TA for this module, maybe for the second or the third year. So he is very expert in this field. And I believe you and myself were get benefits a lot from dealing with Engineer Ahmed Imam. Okay, let me have a very short introduction about my CV. Uh, I have been graduated from Antrim University 2009, Electrical and Communication Department. Using the same university, I have been awarded the master degree in 2012. Then uh, using an, um, a scholarship from the DAD, I have been awarded my PhD from uh, Max Planck Institute in Germany with a collaboration with the uh, University of Duisburg Assen. Uh, actually, my main major is totally uh, far from these topics of communications, 100% related to nanotechnology and communication, uh, and sorry, and electronics. I joined BUE as a TA maybe 11 years ago in 2009. Uh, I also worked for some other places. I worked for the Innovation Hub in Heidelberg in Germany, uh, in the clean room, the place where we fabricate electronics components. Maybe you hear about this term before. Also, I work in IBM Egypt in the nano uh, in the Egypt Nanotechnology Center, uh, affiliated to the Cairo University. Uh, I have uh, um, invested about six months in Max Planck Institute as a postdoc after my after getting my my PhD using a fund from Erasmus Plus, and I'm still uh, affiliated as a guest researcher in Max Planck Institute for cool research in Mulheim. My uh, field of research, as I mentioned, it's somehow far from the topics of our lectures as communication system. So it's more related to solar cells and nanotechnology and electronics. Somehow communication with, rust, with perspective of cryptography and quantum cryptography. This is somehow overlapped with the topics of the communications. Uh, I'm currently leading a subgroup under the title of a fab lab in building B in our university. So please uh, accept my invitation anytime to have a look and have a short tour in our lab so we can you can see our postgraduate and uh, my, uh, and undergraduate students working everywhere okay so let's to go to the course content so, so as i mentioned it's a three uh, it's three parts the first part where i call it the signal analysis in the frequency domain part we are expected to consume three weeks in, in this part. Then we are going to do the analog modulation techniques with about another three weeks. And then we will go to the digital to analog conversion with one week, one lecture. And finally, the digital modulation techniques, three weeks. This is an overall of 10 weeks because we will consume one intermediate week with a revision just before the in-class test. Let's go to the assessment. Of course, the, usually students are more keen about assessment rather than syllabuses. So uh, we have two or three actually types of assessment. We have an in-class test. One in-class test would be in week eight with a 20% weight. And also we have a project. I will have uh, uh, maybe a detailed discussion about the project either in this recorded lecture or during your first uh, on-campus 
day next uh, Tuesday, inshallah. The weight of the project is 20% as well. And finally, we have the unseen exam with 16% weight. This is the overall um, uh, market distribution for the current module. Regarding the uh, project, uh, the project is a group project. It's expected to have three to four students per, per project. We are offering different four types where, where we are going to uh, choose one of these four types. I will give you a very detailed manner about the projects. Here we are the topics. Fourier transform in image processing, amplitude modulation trans uh, transmitter and amplitude modulation receiver, low pass filter frequency response analysis. Actually, we choose these topics to uh, so that they are all covered during the first two or three lectures. That that's gives you the opportunity to start in your project as early as possible, and then you are not somehow correlated with the content of the module. So, for example, if we offer something about digital modulation, then you have to wait for week number nine to, to hear the technical or the theoretical part, which is, of course, too late. So all these components, all, all these topics will be mostly covered by week four, which is a very good uh, time to start in your project. Of course, uh, it is recommended now to start from now searching and uh, doing some uh, effort in give, in collecting data about these topics even before uh, uh, it it has been considered in lectures milestones actually this is very important for me I again i will repeat it uh, once more while i'm talking about our uh, e-learning page and our um, uh, course distribution but milestones is very important because one of the very very bad things is to give you the project in week one and it will evaluate you in week 10 or week 11 and what is in between is a silent mood nothing ha happened so we disconnect we, we lose connection for 10 weeks and then appear yeah please go come and submit your report please come and discuss your report this is too bad from my perspective we have to have a regular follow-up follow meeting so we you are expected to have at least four uh, follow-up meetings we will work first with the even weeks week four week six week eight and then we will have an ad additional milestone in week nine just before the submission the submission will be in week uh, 10 and the discussions will take place in week 11 and 12. so you will have four opportunities to have a one-to-one -one discussions with us myself and my dear colleague engineer ahmed imam where you, we can help support maybe also advise you about your project so please don't lose such an opportunity to follow up your project Technology enhanced learning. Actually, maybe you can consider this slide somehow related to the current condition of the COVID-19. But believe me or not, I'm I used to consider this slide in my lecture from day one, since I start teaching as a module leader from 2017. The reason is actually one of my um, uh, one of um, uh, the courses I have I, I have attended. Uh, I attended a course actually in the Netherlands, in uh, uh, TU Dilfut, in the uh, Netherlands, Technical University of Dilfut. And at the beginning of the course, the instructor asks us a very important question. Uh, the course was um, like our course, it's a fundamental course, it's an introductory course. So uh, he asked us a critical question. The question was, what do you think is the difference between the course we are dribbling, delivering now and the course that has been delivered 12, 20, 30 years ago. For example, in our course, we are dealing with Fourier transform. Fourier have implemented his theory maybe 200, 300 years ago, something like that. So the theory is the same since 200 years ago. The AM, the amplitude modulation, the frequency modulation, the phase modulation exists since tens of years, maybe hundreds. So. Regarding the theoretical part, the added value or the added portion due to the updated technology, while you are talking or while you are considering fundamental or what we call the foundational courses, the added portion is extremely, extremely small. Very few data is added due to technology. But the main difference between the course that has been delivered 20 or 30 years ago and the current course is the way of delivery. 
how we are using technology in order to deliver information for you. For example, now you are watching me maybe over your mobile, your iPad, your tablet, your computer or laptop without a face-to-face -face or a, 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 a physical interaction. We are giving lectures via Zoom. So using technology, of course, this is not the best way of technology. The technology is much more wider than that, but I'm just giving example. So giving uh, using technology in learning is a very critical part in teaching. And in order to make you as much as possible with the full privilege inside the course, so you did not lose any part of the course due to that it's an online course, we will try to offer you a different way of learning and teaching. So, for example, one of the main disadvantages of the online courses is that we don't have a whiteboard, but we can have some alternatives. Let's try to search for alternatives for a, for a whiteboard. So let's, for example, see what I am planning to do. This is a whiteboard. So of course, it's not so clean whiteboard. So let me stop sharing. Okay. So this is a whiteboard. Again, it's not so clean. I'm sorry for that. But it's a whiteboard where I can use to write So you can see my writing now. Now you believe that this is one of my disadvantages, that my handwriting is so bad. So I have to apologize for that. This is uh, one of the ways we will going to deal together. Sometimes I will not prefer using a whiteboard and I will use normal paper. This is a normal paper. And this is somehow a pen. Then we can write. So you can see now my writing. I believe it's in, in somehow in a visible way. The, the, the advantage actually of using papers is that we will save this paper and then we will scan it and then we will upload it all over the e-learning. So you can have all the lecture notes uh, in a detailed manner. So this is uh, one of the uh, advantages of uh, using paper instead of using uh, a normal whiteboard. So this is a way where we can use. Another uh, way or another uh, alternative, let me say, is what's called live board. So please permit me again to share my uh, screen. So now you can see here, okay, or you, you still cannot see. So let me share now the screen. Okay, so this is my live board. So you can see here my writing in a very simple manner. So uh, it's another way to, to, to communicate or to use whiteboard. Uh, again, one of the advantage of this uh, smart whiteboard is that you can also write with me. This platform, which is a live board platform, I just send you the link, all of you. And then, for example, if you would like to ask me a question and you need, you need to make some drawing, so you as a student can have an access and can draw anything you would like to, to, to draw here in a very simple manner. So this is a transmitter, this is a receiver. So I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is a receiver and this is the channel in a very simple and easy way. You can write whatever you want in the, uh, in, in the whiteboard in a very simple manner. So this is another uh, way where we can share ideas together. Uh, 
uh, and we can write everything. By the way, uh, in the live lecture, which will be on Wednesday morning, we will be, or we will have more, uh, one more added feature that we will, I will work on a smart whiteboard. So you can see my writing over, you can, you will see me uh, standing over uh, beside the whiteboard and writing everything for you and something like that. So all these facilities is toward what we can call a synchronized uh, blended learning. We are trying to make you to feel like you are now in your classroom attending lectures and so on. And please, please, please go on with ideas. Please don't stop thinking because you are more put you, you or you have more potential than me in thinking you are younger you are more uh, correlated to technology so whenever you have an idea you believe that this idea will engage us more and more please don't hesitate to email me call me text me or whatever you want in order to reach me your idea so this is very important so now during the lecture uh, we will have a lot i'm sorry <laughs> it's not in the correct way uh, during the lecture we will have a lot of ways that we can communicate together in order to make the lecture easy flexible you are here to learn and to enjoy so part of my work is to make you or to make the information reach you in the most simple way i can do so i will try my best to do it your help is always needed and always appreciated in order to do it in this manner. So please don't hesitate to share your ideas. Let's now return to my slides uh, and let me again open my uh, pointer, laser pointer. And now this is about the teaching and learning. By the way, we will have also uh, a bank or a hub of uh, uh, tools that we will use together in order to implement different communication system. These tools can be used over your mobile, either Android or iOS, uh, on tablet, iPhones, iPads, on even over your, using your laptop. So don't worry, we will do the most or the top technology needed in order to make you understand the topic. Office hours, this is one of the very critical question real, concerning uh, online learning. Whenever you are going online, you believe that now the link, the physical link between you and me has been cut, which is not true. Now we are trying to offer you different ways of, of uh, office hours. Basically, the first is the normal office hour, which is a physical office hour. You will be on campus every Tuesday. I will be available every Tuesday. I will be in my office in 301 building A waiting for you. Just please email me one day or two days before Tuesday, say to me, please, I need to meet you on Tuesday at 12 p.m. Then I will reply within maybe 12 hours. I will say, okay, confirm it or please let's make it 1 p.m. So what you are intended to do is just to send me an email with the needed time slot you would like to have a discussion with me about. So, and I will be always available to answer you and to be uh, on my office to, uh, help you if I can during the course or even outside the course of course. The other way is that to schedule uh, online office hours. Here I am using a very uh, simple way, let me say, with my postgraduate uh, students. This is my online calendar. So simply if you press this link, then you will reach a window. I will now share it with you, the window. So. So you will have window such this way. This, this is simply my schedule. So I'm now recording this lecture on Saturday 17th. So it's now highlighted with the yellow, as you can see. So let me again open my pointer. Okay, so it's now highlighted with the yellow. So now I'm, I just have one meeting today, otherwise I'm free. So maybe for the next week. So here, the next week. So as you can see, here is the, uh, my schedule every day. Uh, so this is October 18, my, my Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. So you can easily pick up any time slot available. And then for example, for example, this uh, two, Thursday 22 at, for example, uh, 
8 p.m. I'm available. So what you are going to do is just you will send me an email to me, please. I need to meet you on Thursday 22 by 8 p.m. over Zoom online. I will either say, okay, this is suitable for me or I'm sorry, I have some family commitment or something like that. So let's make it 9 p.m. for example. So very easy. Please feel free to call me anytime over uh, over the email or even over the WhatsApp. And I believe that you will reach me in the fastest way you can ever expect. So this is another uh, way where we are going to uh, manage the office hours. Okay, so let's now return again back to the slides. This is what about for office hour. Then let's do another topic, which is feedback. Feedback actually is very, 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 very important for us. Usually, I can give you feedback whenever you have an assessment. So, for example, after the in-class test, I can say, say uh, you, I can give you a detailed for feedback, a written or an oral feedback. Maybe in the project, in the follow-up meetings, we will have the, the opportunity to have also uh, a feedback. But the, the problem actually is related to the other side of the feedback, the feedback from yourself to mine. This is actually very important. While we are doing an in-class learning, it's easy for me to catch your feedback from your impressions. So I can understand, it. either you are understanding my topic or not, you, you consider my lecture is boring lecture or not, or whatever. But as far as you are now hidden in your home, beside your computer, I cannot see your reaction. So. It's very difficult for me to catch your feedback. Herein, it's very important to have what we can call an online feedback. What is the online feedback? So it's a very simple way. In the end, sorry, in the in, end of every lecture, you will find this QR code or this link. Both will end up with the same, uh, uh, with the same, uh, um, let me say, same uh, link or the same website. It's very simple. Let me now uh, st stop sharing for a while and show you what I will going to do. What I'm going to do is very easy. I will use any QR code uh, reader. Okay, so this is a QR code reader. Or you can use the link, of course, directly. And then I will scan the code. It will end up with a link. I will press this link. Let me now shut the camera so, so, so that you can see my uh, screen, mobile screen. So this is my mobile screen. So now you can see the questions. The first question is, I am interested in the lecture topics, yes or no. So you, you, what you, you are going to do is just to, to press either yes or no. That's all. Then if you go to the next slide, the question is, what you most like in the in this lecture? What you most like? What is the best thing you, you have seen in this lecture? The second is what you most dislike, as you can see. And finally, to what extent are you satisfied with the lecture and the content? So just you can evaluate. Very simple. It takes, as you can see, it takes something like few uh, Many, uh, yeah, maybe a few seconds. So it's a very, very easy way. You, so we, you can uh, manage uh, the feedback. In each lecture, during the last 20, 15 minutes, you will be asked or you will be, uh, uh, oh, I will recommend that you will use this feedback system in order to gather your feedback. Believe me, this is very important. Without this feedback, I will not be able to catch your impressions. Maybe you decide after one or two lectures that I will open the Zoom for just for the attendance. I will mute the mic and the speaker, and then I will go to bed because our lecture, by the way, is 9 a.m. morning. So that's all. Then I believe that, oh, of course, yeah, it's very nice. I have 20 students out of 21 every lecture. I'm very, very happy. But 15 students of the, uh, out of the 20 are on their beds, not, on, uh, not, not attending. So this is very important. To, to cope with the online teaching, we have to have these continuous feedbacks. Uh, this is about the feedback. Let me now again return to our slides.
And let me again use my laser pointer. Okay, so this is about the feedback. Lecture attendance coordinations. We have a Wednesday lecture at 9 a.m. morning. I usually prefer early lectures. So please try to wake up early and to be uh, online uh, maybe by uh, 10 minutes to 9 or 5 minutes to 9 maximum. Then we will have a tutorial, which is still online on Wednesday from 11 to 1. And we will have an on-campus follow-up meetings with the project every Tuesday from 9 to 12. Actually, it's not every Tuesday, as I will show you after a few seconds. We have a complete schedule where you will know exactly when you will be uh, inside the, uh, the lab for the follow-up meetings. Regarding the lecture uh, length or the interval, the time intervals, actually, I like this analysis uh, um, very much. Uh, when I first started to make my first lectures three or four years ago, I started to think about what is the, the, the suitable, what is the appropriate time allocation for one lecture. And I start searching about the internet, about the human concentration. These curves actually show uh, some measurement for the human con concentration over a certain interval of time. As you can see from this curve that the human concentration starts to increase from minimum. Then here is the threshold or the minimum acceptable concentration for an event. Then it reaches peak and then it's go down as you can see. Usually, normal human beings, your normal persons, can sustain for 90 to 100 minutes with their above threshold uh, concentration. So, according to that, our lecture will usually start by 9.15. Actually, this 15 minutes in the beginning is usually for set uh, up our uh, lecture. For example, now we have online lecture, so I have to enter Zoom. Sometimes we, maybe we have an, a problem with the internet. Sometimes maybe you have a problem with the internet. Sometimes maybe you wake up uh, late so for some reason. Uh, by the way, I will deliver the lecture from the campus. So maybe there is some traffic jam or something like that in the morning. There is a lot of reasons. So it's better now, uh, usual to have this morning module of 15 minutes to manage everything. Then. We will start officially by 9.15. By the way, we will be online from 9, from 9 morning. Whenever I reach my, cl my classroom at 9, I will start the Zoom meeting at 9. And I will be very happy for off-record discussions from 9 to 9.15, maybe about your feedback, about your questions, or maybe anything else. Then the lecture will start by 9.15 for 19 minutes. So we will end by 11, 15 minutes to 11, 10.45. So usually our lecture interval will be not exceeding 90, 90 minutes. So this is the outline of our course. And now I would prefer to go to the e-learning page of our course to show you how we will manage our e-learning page. Of course, it's still to some extent empty, but uh, it's better now to have a look to our e-learning page. So now I believe that now you are you can see my e-learning page. Uh, so here we start with the module specification. You are you you have I believe some knowledge about the module specification. So here you can find all details about the module, introduction to the module, the ILOs for course, the content, the lectures. We have lectures, the tutorial and labs. Actually, I, I believe it's better to call it the follow-up sessions because it's not a lab, it's a project. We have here an in-class test 20%, for 20% unseen, exam 60%. And also, this is a reading list. I will mention more about references in my, the end of my presentation. So this is the first document. Then we have the, le le the lecturer bio. This is one of the BOE uh, obligations to have the lecturer uh, bio uh, inserted in the page of the module. Then you have the coursework brief. Here you have all the details related to the coursework. So here, for example, it's year three, semester one. We have a, a project with 20%, in-class test with 20%. The in-class test will be online for 90 minutes. It's myself and my, my colleague, engineer Ahmed the Imam. Then you will have the full description about the, the project first, and then another description about the in-class test. So everything about the coursework, 
course work brief you will find it here then let's come to one of the most important files in this e-learning page which is the course time plan what is the course time plan the course time plan is a detailed day-by-day -day description for all the sessions that will be implemented in the course so here let me minimize it a bit also i am sorry okay okay so oh, sorry sorry so here is i have to make it a bit bigger okay so here is the days for example next tuesday we will have the introduction for the uh, lab uh, we are dividing you into three groups a 1.1 a 1.2 a 1.3 i will show you the group distribution distribution in a minute uh, and then we will have an, an on-campus introduction to the project from 9 to 11 uh, 10, 10 to 11 11 uh, to 12 as you can see in this uh, description then we will have a, uh, another uh, a, a, the first lecture from 9 to 11 on Wednesday uh, online of course and then we will have the tutorial from 9 to 11 again on Wednesday then we will have also the uh, the next week uh, or the second week is in this flow and so on so you can see in this uh, in this file every and each information related to the group the projects that the topics the the assessment so for example here the in-class test actual class test will be on thursdays here you can find the date the time everything about the in-class test for uh, the project submission again here all, uh, all the data about the project submission so here you will find the uh, project discussion in week 11 12 revision lectures everything about the course will be found in this document. So this is a very important document, by the way, and it is very important to keep engaged in this document uh, every week so that you can track the progress we are implementing in the course. So this is the course uh, time plan. Uh, then you have this generic link. This link will be used for attending any lecture or tutorial in the module. So one link will be used over the the whole semester what you are going to do is just to click on this link and then that's all you have now uh, you have now linked to that lecture or that book and finally this is the pickup meeting link i show it to you in order to make a, a meeting with me so what you are going to do is just to pick up this uh sorry uh, click this link and that's all then you can you can see my schedule and then you can book uh one hour or whatever as an office hour whenever you uh, would like so, so this is about this the first then we have the lectures here are the lectures for example this lecture zero we are now recording then we have the lecture script this is a document which includes the full description of the lecture everything uh, 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 delivered is that lecture uh, equations uh, descriptions anything I, I i i have mentioned verbally will be included in the lecture script then recorded lecture so after recording this lecture you will find the recorded link here uh, lecture animation and learning tools whenever we have a learning tools or animations tutorial problems with answers projects here you find the project description so this is the project description a detailed project description for whatever you need and then you will also find this important data for the first week which is the groups here you can see that we have three groups you just need to open the file and see which group are you in so uh, this is group a1 for example a1.1 and then we have a group a1.2 and group a1.3 the first group will attend in the first hour the second group will attend in the second hour the third group will attend in the third hour and so on so it's very easy uh, this will be in the first week of course uh, this tuesday uh, i believe it's uh, october 20 if i'm correct so let's now return back and then we have the online assessment and submission here you can here will here we will upload the in class test here we will upload the uh, pro, some project submission platform and all this stuff and finally the previous exams actually for the previous exams 
Uh, it's my first time to, to, to deliver this course, so I don't have a previous exam. I, I'm, I'm not interested to put other pre previous exams because this will not reflect my flavor in writing the exam. So in order to uh, compensate this, I will make what, we, what I call a rehearsal exam. So I make something like the exam and I will put it for you. This is for me is, is much better because this reflect my way of thinking. Because for example, my dear colleague, uh, Dr. Michael Ibrahim, who, are, uh, who were delivering this course one year ago. Of course, uh, Dr. Michael is a, an exam, a big expert in communication. However, I'm not sure what exactly the content of the course he were delivering. So for example, I can insert a question uh, an exam, sorry, and you will find some questions which you will not be able to solve because simply you did not, we did not consider this topic in the exam, uh, in the course. So it's better to make it by my flavor. And that's why I will use to have this uh, rehearsal exam, let me say, to uh, reflect my way of thinking in the exam. So let's now return back to the lecture uh, slides. Uh, again, we are still in the uh, our course outline lecture. Now, what about the reading looks? Actually, we will have two references. The first one is analog communicate introduction to analog and digital communication system by Simon Heiken. This is the most famous standard reference for communication system everywhere. Uh, you can check, for example, MIT Open Courses, Berkeley, UCLA, Manchester, and a lot of other universities where you can find this reference is the main reference for delivering communication modules. However, this reference will be more oriented to the second and the third portion of the course, the portion dealing with the analog communication system and the portion dealing with the digital communication system. For the first portion, which is, as I mentioned, as an extension for the signals course, there is a lot of, um, a lot of uh, references, but for myself, I prefer this unknown reference, which is introduction to digital uh, signals and system analysis. This is not so famous by a Sh Chinese guy called uh, Viang Wang. He is not so famous. This, the book is not so famous, but I like his way of teaching or his way of delivery. So please don't restrict yourself to this. You will find a huge amount. Maybe if you access the e-learning or uh, sorry, the module specs, you will find a, a, a detailed reading list. But from my perspective, I will refer to this, uh, uh, to this uh, textbook in the first portion of the course. Now, this is all I have for this module, for this first lecture. I wish you somehow feeling interested in the module after the first uh, zero lecture. After the lecture on Wednesday, you will have the opportunity to give us your feedback, which is, of course, always appreciated. Thank you very much for being with us for the first recorded lecture for the Introduction to Communication course. And looking forward to our first lecture on Wednesday, October 21. Thank you. See you later.